Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, today is Tuesday, September 29th. Hey, I just wanted to do a video today. Uh, over the weekend, I was busy. I was up north speaking, and um, so I wasn't really uh, in on or on social media or anything uh, to see about the prayer events that took place in Washington, D.C. But I did read an article on Sunday when I was home and um, it was talking about some of the things of possibility of why that event really didn't mean anything. And I was like, uh, I'm a big prayer guy, but I, I read through it and um, it brought some things out in First and Second Kings. So I wanted to find out for myself and I started to listen to First and Second Kings. Something else jumped out, it had nothing to do with the prayer thing, but God spoke to me about the nation and about the church and about the the sides that we are picking not just for the nation but even in black lives matter and masks and all this stuff is literally um, it's a contention for the country we live in i'm going to share with you what first kings uh, says i'm going to share with you what the lord showed me and then it's up to you to take from that what you want. So the story that the Lord brought to my mind as it was playing is literally he zeroed me in like that. It's, a, it's the story in 1 Kings chapter 3 uh, where Solomon, uh, obviously he prayed for wisdom. God gave him wisdom. And two women, it says they were harlots. I'm going to read the scripture, just a few scriptures first. It says, then two women who were harlots came to the king, which is Solomon, and stood before him. The one woman said, oh, my Lord, this woman and I live in the same house, and I gave birth to a child while she was in the house. It happened on the third day after I gave birth that this woman also gave birth to a child, and we were together. There was no stranger with us in the house, only the two of us in the house. It says, this woman's son died in the night because she lay on it. So she arose in the middle of the night and took my son from beside me while your maidservant slept and laid him in her bosom and laid her dead son in my bosom. When I rose in the morning to nurse my son, behold, he was dead. But when I looked at him carefully in the morning, behold, he was not my son whom I had born. And the other woman said, No, for the living one is my son, and the dead one is your son. But the first woman said, No, for the dead one is your son, and the living one is my son. Thus they spoke before the king, who was Solomon. Here's Solomon's response. It says, Then the king said, The one says, There's a lot. This is, it's repetitive, but I'm just reading it to you. So try not to get lost. Open up your Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 3. And it says, Then the king said, The one says, This is my son who is living. And your son is the dead one. And the other one says, No, for your son is the dead one, and my son is the one living. Here is uh, Solomon's judgment. It says, The king said, Give me a sword. So they brought this, a sword before the king. The king, being Solomon, said, Divide the living child in two and give, one ha or give half to one and half to the other. Then the woman whose child was living... Or wait, the, then the woman whose child was the living, one spoke to the king. So the, the woman whose child was the living one, who claimed to have the living one, spoke to the king. And she said, for she was deeply stirred over her son and said, oh my, or oh my Lord, give her the living child and by no means kill him. But the other said, he shall be neither mine nor yours, divide him. And then Solomon, it says, then the king said, Solomon, Give the first woman the living child, and by no means kill him. She is his mother. When all Israel, well, pay attention to this, when all Israel heard of the judgment which the king, who was Solomon, had handed down, they feared the king, for they saw the wisdom of God was in him to administer justice. I, I staggered through that, because it's like repeating the same stuff. I'm sorry, I was just a little nuts, but... So here's the story in a nutshell. Two harlots who live in the same house had, had babies, had, each had a baby. One of them died. The other one switched them out and claimed it was hers. They both went to the king to settle the dispute. 
instead of him trying to figure out whose was who, he said, let's just kill this thing. Let's cut it in half and then you'll both be satisfied. The one who really cared about it, the one who was legitimately the mother, humbled herself and instead of the child being killed, she said, just give it to her. Don't kill the baby, just give it to her. But the other one said, no, no, just cut it in half. Let's just divide this baby. Didn't care about the life of the baby. And immediately it says that the wisdom of God was in Solomon. And he made the choice that the woman who was willing to give it up, give that son up for the sake of the life of it, was the one who was the owner of it. When I heard that, I heard the Lord say to me, this is what's going on in America right now. See, the problem is, uh, over the weekend we had a prayer, uh, a couple prayer things in Washington, D.C., and it's exactly what led me to 1 Kings and 2 Kings because I saw an article uh, from somebody that I, fairly, I respect fairly, uh, you know, with their judgment, and it said how it wasn't what it appeared to be. And it and named some things in there. And, and here's, in it, it's saying that it wasn't a good event like everyone's playing it out to be. Here's the deal. See, we are called to, we use that scripture, um, 2 Chronicles 7.14, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways that he will heal their land that god will heal our land see the problem is prayer is not enough to heal our land see prayer in itself with wrong motives is not enough to heal our land see it takes humility he says humble themselves seek my face and turn from their wicked ways see this woman humbled herself because she cared more about the life of that child than she did being right and having possession of even half of a dead child. See, the Lord was showing me that many on both sides, even Christians, would rather the country be split, and I've been guilty of this, would rather the country be split than to be humble and allow God to make the wisdom in the, in the justice and administer justice in this situation. See, when neither side is humble and neither side will give in, God has no choice but to split the baby down the middle. Think about what I just said. God has no choice but to split the baby down the middle. See, King Solomon, if they both would have said that, probably would have cut the baby in half. But he didn't. Because one side was humble enough to, to even, even though they knew it was their baby, it was her son. She said, well, let her have it. Let her have him. Let the son go with her because I, I would rather him be alive with her than dead and, and, and be right in this matter. See, the Lord kept... Play it over again, Dan. Play it over again. And the funny thing is, he refers to these two women. It says, then two women who were harlots. See, harlots are prostitutes, right? Adulteresses. They are, they are not good women. The two sides that we have fighting in this country right now are harlots. Neither one is good. And neither one right now is humble. And the Lord said to me, he said, whoever humbles themselves and allows me to administer justice will be the one that possesses the land. However, if neither side humbles themselves, I will split the land. Not necessarily in two, I just heard I will split the land. So here's the deal. You know, sometimes being right is actually the wrong answer. Being wrong is never the right answer, right? But being humble is always the right answer. See, pride and being wrong and even you know, anything with humility attached to it is better than anything with pride attached to it. 
And right now it's two prideful sides. Listen, if you really believe that Jesus is Lord, if you really believe that God can deliver us from anything, then who cares who runs the country? Who cares what the, what the uh, laws are? Who cares? Seriously, who cares? If you believe that God is sovereign, if you truly believe that God is sovereign, do your thing, vote, whatever, but allow him to make, humble yourself and allow him to administer justice. If you're in Black Lives Matter, if you're fighting for social injustice, don't take matters into your own hands. Don't demand uh, the king to cut something in half, to, to cut people in half or whatever to be right. It's about humility. It's about compassion and sacrifice for whatever it is in front of us. It's exactly what this story is about. The wisdom of God is smart enough to spot the one who cares more about the object that they're fighting over than actually having the object themselves. This woman was willing to give her own son to a wicked woman who was accusing her of, of not having that son, of having the dead son. She was willing to humble herself for the sake of that kid's life. It's something I don't see in America right now. Humility is far and few between. I've had to repent several times. It's frustrating me. I want the world to be right, but here's the deal. The only way it's going to be right is when Jesus returns or when Jesus sets it right. Seeing a lot of posts uh, from... from um, religious sites and stuff. It says, stop saying that we're being judged right now. God is just setting up for the for a big, huge awakening. You know, he's going to bring the majority of America. He's getting ready to bless America. See, I don't see that. I do see an awakening. I do. But there's a huge difference between an awakening and blessing America. I mean, if he awakens one-tenth of the population, that would be amazing. That would probably be the biggest revival ever. But still, nine-tenths of the population would be wicked and destroy stuff. See, what I do see is God is doing an awakening, but he's also casting out, putting out judgment, putting out consequences for the seeds that we have sown and are still sowing today. God said... Whoever humbles themselves will possess the land. It says, blessed are the meek. They shall inherit the earth. The meek. Not blessed are those who can prove their point by arguing or prove their point by violence. Or bless, blessed are those who are strong enough to destroy the enemy. Blessed are those who are meek, for they will inherit the earth. All right, guys. That's the message he gave me. Uh, it's up to you. I don't know how that resonates with you, but go in there. It's uh, 1 Kings chapter 3. Uh, read through that. Pretty nifty story. Pretty awesome. Uh, a lot of wisdom there by Solomon. And uh, I think it was very, very relative to what we got going on today. All right, guys. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, thanks again for buying uh, my book, 11 to 7. And make sure you go in and give a review, especially if you bought it on Amazon or Barnes & Noble. All right, guys. Peace out. We'll see you.